everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stocks. Well, should I re going to review the QQQs tonight? I usually review the SPY because I'm in some spider options, but I want to review the Qs because the reason we fell on Friday actually was because of the Qs. Because the Qs did not have the stamina and energy and the pull through to gap up a smidgen more. I mean, just a smidgen. And we would, if we had, we would have rallied on the day and we would have held the gap in the SPY. But, but where we opened, we couldn't do it. So what we needed to do was basically open, I mean, this was like such a smidgen. In fact, in the pre-market, I think we were there. Yeah, that was the problem. Here, let's go back and look. So the morning of Friday, we gapped up nicely. 104.32, rallied up to 104.60-ish. And look what happened. We didn't open there, okay? By the time we came in, and I saw this in the morning because I always look at the gaps in the morning. We were here. We were here. In instead, what would happen, this happened so early. It was like 8 o'clock in the morning or something. I think it was earlier than that, actually. Hold on. No, it was 8.30. So at 8.30, we, we, we were here. The problem was we didn't open till, till 9.30. So what happened was from the period of time from 8.30 to 9.30 to the market opened, we couldn't hold this position. And so then we ended up opening here which is only slightly lower, but, but unfortunately to many people, this looks like a short. Why? People are saying we're shorting into the resistance that, that look at a chart. If you just look at this snapshot here, now I'm teaching you something here, pay attention. In fact, I just, I'm going to do an email out this week. I just thought of it. Hold on. I'm write something down to myself. I don't have time to explain this in a video. It's too long. But I'm going to write an email, or maybe I'll talk about it in the webinar, actually. Maybe I'll talk about the webinar tomorrow night, because I have a webinar Monday night. What The bottom line is that, and what I was going to teach you here, is that if you just look at this right here, you think that this is a short into the resistance on Friday, and that is the market fell. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say the market didn't fall on Friday. The market fell. But to me, when I look at this, okay, even though we show right in the day and we dropped to the day, the irony is this is not that big of a deal. We really, if we were weak, would have collapsed ourselves. We would have just collapsed ourselves. Just absolutely collapsed ourselves. In fact, the market did not barely even break itself. If I take off the pre and post market data, all we did was open and came in and we set the low of the day by noon. So we only fell for two and a half hours. Big whoop. Now, I know you're saying, well, Melissa, we fell. Yeah, but from four hours for then for four hours, hours we did nothing so for the four hour period from 12 o'clock till we closed we didn't do anything we were we we didn't have enough stamina and energy and we were exhausted and too tired then to go higher in the day but we didn't fall for four hours we held in here and we based and based and based and based now i am going to put the post market stuff up we didn't even fall in the post market. Ay, 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 ay. And I'm telling you, we could have. So what I'm saying is we could have. Is we could have, and we could have done it. And the reason the spy didn't hold the gap, which I really thought the spy would hold the gap. I mean, the spy should have held that gap on Friday, and the only reason it didn't is because the queues didn't hold itself into the open. Because it did what it did too early. It was an hour before the open. But where was it going to go with itself? Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is if you look at this right here, you think, oh, the market was a short and resistance and we're low, or blah, 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 blah. Don't be surprised. And I'm not saying this happens with 100% conviction, but I'm saying don't be surprised. Do not be surprised at all if you get up on Monday morning and we actually completely reverse and do a 100% do reversal of the bar from Friday and actually do open here on Friday and actually gap up where we closed, which was 103. It's like just a dollar. Don't be surprised if we gap any, anywhere. In fact, I'm just looking at this right now. I'll tell you right now. Any, anything. We don't even have to do this now on Monday. We, we really need to do that on Friday. We didn't. Why? Because of the rally that took us into the area. But on Monday morning, if we open anywhere from here above, we're going to hold it. And we're going to go poop. And we're going to rally. And this is how I see next week transpiring. Now, I'm not saying for sure that we absolutely have to rally and gap up big on Monday, but I'm saying we, we're going to rally on Monday. I don't know how it sets up. It's better if it, it's better if we just open here and rally. But even if we open like here, we're going to rally. And actually, if we open down here, we're going to rally. We're going to, we'll just do a cheese sandwich. But the bottom line is we're going to rally on Monday. I can't see in any world that exists on the planet that we don't rally on Monday, whether we gap up or neutral or down. 
So what I'm trying to say to you, and what the point I'm trying to make is you gotta look at this correctly because many, many people say, oh my goodness, they'll say, look at that, Melissa, it's a shortened resistance. The market's lower. Look at it, it's a shortened, the 50 pair moving average and it's holding the resistance. No, 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 no. I'm reading this and I'm saying, oh, this is very interesting because we could have fallen off a planet on Friday and we didn't. And not only that, for four, four hours, do you, do you have any idea how long four hours is? If, if I was in a trade for four hours, if I was in a day trade for four hours, I would fall asleep. I would actually fall asleep. Who knows what would happen? Who knows if we even get up before before 3.58 to get out of the thing before the market closes? I mean, I mean, for four hours for the US stock market to base and go nowhere? Seriously? I'm telling you, this is, this is stop, this is, this is an ETF, it's market, but it was resting for four solid hours. It rested on Friday. And that's a sign of strength. I know no one believes me anymore, but I'm telling you that we could have fallen harder and we didn't. And for four solid hours, we didn't go higher, but we didn't go lower. But we needed the energy to go higher. And, and why? Because it was just, it was just too darn late in the day. By the time we fell in the morning and set the low of the day at noon, we, we was too late. Too late in the day, too late in the week, and we did come into the resistance. But in the end, if the shorts had control of this situation, which they do not, in my opinion, then we would have fallen off a planet on Friday. It will be very interesting to see what happens on Monday. Even if we gap down on Monday, I can't see how we don't rally. I just can't, I can't picture in my mind any scenario that we're not, we don't rally on Monday, on the live trading day. Up, down, neutral, however we get. So it'll be very interesting to see, but in an ideal world, buying comes into the pre-market here. We open and we just go, poof, and we take off. But either way, I see it happening. I just see it happening. So we'll, well, it's very exciting, but the, but the cues were the reason the spy didn't hold the gap on Friday because it, the spy gap was good. Spy gap was good to hold in no man's land, but the cues couldn't do it with itself. Why doesn't even matter. I'm seeing this. If you look at it the way that I see it in relationship to the price action, the way it moves, it's it's not just gaps that I understand. It's how I understand how money moves in the market and price action. If you look at this and you say, oh my goodness, Melissa, we, we came in and we were into the resistance. If you just look at it that way and only look at that and only see that, you miss the whole boat. You miss everything I just explained over here, okay? You miss the gap up, which we did gap up. I mean, we gapped. Up. No matter how you want to call the day how it transpired, we gapped up on Friday. And in fact, we failed in a bearish gap down on the two days before. We gapped up on Thursday and we gapped up on Friday. And there's no taking away from that, even though we closed around in the day. And this is not a big down move for the market. It's a buck. Big whoop. And and we did it. And then we, for two hours or two and a half hours, and then we just based all day. We could have fallen off a planet. And that's what I'm saying. We didn't do it. We didn't even, not only did we not fall off a planet, we didn't even fall into here. It's like, we didn't even fall into here. We didn't even fall into here. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So the point I'm trying to make is, and then I'll let everybody go, is that what I'm trying to say is that we're not weak. We're not weak. I don't see weakness in here, and I'm very good at spotting it. I see strength in the market. Despite the fact we were red on Friday, which was unfortunate for people that wanted to go long or run longs, but I will tell you that the market's going to fall through higher this week, so get ready. Get ready for the shorts to come in and do like what's called like a short squeeze. And I really should probably talk about this in the webinar Monday night so people understand, but you got to learn to read this stuff right, and I'm so good at reading money. I'm just so good at reading money, and it's it's just the way that the price acts. It's it's just the way the price acts. It's just some people would, so many people would look at this chart and, and look at this and they say, Melissa, this is weak and we're going to break and we're holding resistance. And it's just not how I see it. It's just not how I see it. It's not how I see it at all. So it'll be really exciting to see if we do what I'm saying next week. But in my mind, I cannot, I cannot see any scenario that we don't rally on Monday. Meaning even if we gap down, we rally. It'd be really incredible to see what we do. Anyways, have a great night, everyone. Email me at Melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you'd like more information. The next Golden Gap class is March 5th and 7th. If you would like to sign up, email me at Melissa at thestockswoosh.com and have a great day.